They got the spirit. They got a love for Christ. And so he says it happened without following rules just by believing in the message that was preached. And they was like, well, they got to become Jews. Wait a minute. You got to still get circumcised. And hold on. They're not really in until they do these things. And so he was battling. That's what verse 16 was saying. It's not by what you do that makes you right. It's not works of the law, following the law. It's by faith in Christ. If he didn't do what he did or God didn't use him to do what he did to take that stance and just look at one thing and I'll, I'll let him say it for us. Um, go to verse um, chapter one. Chapter one, Galatians, we in Galatians. Uh, Okay, so chapter 1, verse number 10. So here's how he, look at what he equated serving Christ with, being true to the gospel. Like I'm defending his honor, what he died for. Because what's at stake if folks are allowed to take a religious pro approach in their relationship with God? What's at stake if, I, if, I'm a, if I'm led or allowed to believe is based upon the rules that I keep or the things I don't do no more? Their salvation for sure. And then I think there's something that would lead to salvation. Um, but what else is at stake? Definitely they have something at stake by not hearing the truth. But what's at stake in God's perspective um, if the truth is not proclaimed and people are not allowed to hear the truth as it is? His promise? Right, so him fulfilling his promise of saving. And so those are things that result on our end. But remember, God in all of his activity is never for us first. His activity is always to do something for himself first. Thank you. So the glory of God is at stake if people are able to release Christianity down the rule keeping. Because you don't see that the whole weight of your existence is on what he did. And now you won't look at him with the eyes I want you to look at him with, which is my whole existence hangs on what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will do on my behalf. I'll be led to believe partly that you did something and I've got to do something. And basically all the other stuff is based upon how, how tight I'm holding, how obedient I'm being, how uh, all this is, starts with me if his glory is not the centerpiece. Remember what Moses asked. He said, if I found favor in your sight, show me your glory. Like here is what I need, like. Show me your glory. Like, that is what I want to see. We were reading the last couple of weeks. We were looking at the 2 Corinthians passage, chapter 4, that if our gospel is hid, it is hid to those that are blind. And then, and again, remember when he's saying gospel, he has something specific in mind. Because think about this, though. <clears throat> A lot of people have the title gospel music. But it's not really gospel in terms of what it's saying. It may have Christ in there, but it's not grounded in the gospel. If I come out of the context and I'm thinking right now, the word of faith movement of which I was in in a, in a deep way that God pulled me out. A lot of stuff in there was called the gospel. When I had got a clear revelation of the gospel, I went to meet with the pastor to tell him I was leaving. And my basis for leaving, and I couldn't explain it as I may be able to explain it now, but it's, man, I need the gospel. And he was like, well, what you mean? We preaching the gospel? Like what, do you, like, what do you mean? But I, I couldn't articulate it clearly at that moment. 
but I knew that what I'm getting right now based on these rules and what I'm trying, like, that ain't it. And so it was that distinction between religion and trying to do and understanding what I am because of Christ. That made all, and it's a small window that God, and this is why we got to pray, like, God, show me the glory of the gospel. Because remember, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 says that um, the enemy has blinded people's minds so that they wouldn't see the light of the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like, here's his whole work. I don't want you to see the glory. Because if you see the glory, you will forever be changed. That's what changed Paul. He saw Christ in his glory. He was a rule keeper. He, was a, he knew the rules. He did the feast, the fast, the tithing. He did all of that but didn't know Christ from a, a, a mountain on the wall. And not, he didn't know Christ if he saw him looking straight at him, wouldn't serve him, wouldn't follow him. But it was when he saw him in his glory, everything changed. So is it like taking communion and you don't really know what it means? Or you're, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this from two perspectives. I haven't gotten it yet. Okay, so that's all right. Thank you. Thank you. It's that. It, it, it is what he said in 16. We are justified, not by keeping rules. What you do is by trusting in what Christ has done. It's faith. Faith is, a, is something that um, we, don't, we don't work in that. It's dependence on somebody else's work. It is trust, reliance on that. It's like I bring nothing to the table. There's a song that says, nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to your cross I cling. I mean, my, all my hope, all my sufficiency, all my righteousness is over there. Which, when that happens, you have this self-debasing. Um, you, you become truly humble in the spiritual sense, not the fake humble. Of I'm trying to appear humble and I ain't really, but I've been broken on the inside at the core. Listen, because I saw the glory. The glory didn't change. He is real. He is the truth. I must follow him. I owe him my life. Everything changes. Religion is out the window. I'm no, I still will do. Because here's gospel fruit. Religion is do this or else. I'm going to go to hell. I'm going to miss blessings. Um, things ain't going to work out in my life. And so everything I do in that is focused on me. I don't want hell. I don't want bad circumstances, situations. But here's the gospel thing. It never leaves. Do this. But it's do this because. Because it honors God. It glorifies Christ. It shines his beauty in the world. And so that's the difference. And that's why even as you was like, I'm in between because it's, it's a small shift. And so our prayer is God put me in that window of the gospel. Because you have those two extremes of, and this is why some people um, don't hammer in the gospel and they use it only as the entryway. You need to hear the gospel to come to Christ. After that, you got to get focused on these rules. You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to stop that. Lead that alone. And then you lose sight of the gospel and all you're doing now is working without the joy that you need to really work. For Christ. And so it's that small window, which is why when I went to the pastor and said, I'm leaving because I need the gospel, he didn't understand what I was saying. Because he was like, We talk about Jesus. We do an altar call at the end of the service. People are responding to that. But it wasn't grounded in the gospel. Really, what was happening is people was hearing the promise of God will make you rich. If you be faithful to him, God will bless your life. And so I'm in trouble. My circumstance is awful. I need anything I can get. You mean God to do that? I'm coming. Sign me up. And so it's not grounded in the truth. 